All right, Algebra 1A students, welcome to your first video uh, of Algebra 1A. Uh, we're going to look today at Lesson 1 of, of Chapter 1. Uh, so it's found in your books right on page 4 if you want to turn there. Uh, page 4 in your textbooks. We're going to talk about variables, what they are, how we are going to use them in algebra, and then two different types of expressions. And we'll start to look at how we can write these expressions uh, based on some mathematical sentences that we we're given. So we're going to start with some vocabulary uh, right away. Three very, very important words for the rest of this video. Uh, the first one being variable. Uh, a variable is a symbol, which is usually a letter that represents one or more numbers. So the most common variable that we see in uh, math class would be x or maybe y or even z. Sometimes we use a and b. Uh, really, we can use any letter we want. And we will use all of the letters, all 26 letters, as variables in this class to represent one or more numbers. Now, when we have uh, a, an expression of numbers and variables, uh, when that expression does include variables, we call that an algebraic expression. Because algebra, algebraic, means uh, involving variables. Okay? It involves things like x, y, or z. Uh, and then if we have an expression that is just numbers, like 3 plus 2 or 4 times 8, something like that, where it's just numbers with no variables, no letters at all, we call that a numerical expression. Okay? Numerical expression, numerical, meaning number, numer, like number. Um, so no variables in numerical expressions, variables in algebraic expressions. Okay, make sure you get those three words written down somewhere in your notes. Uh, and then we're going to start looking today at how we actually write uh, these algebraic expressions. Okay, so these algebraic ones are the ones we're going to focus on, obviously, mostly in this class because it is called Algebra 1A. Uh, so once you have these three vocabulary words written down. Just go ahead and uh, keep keep going down with me here. Uh, we're going to start by talking about how we write expressions from word phrases, from word, uh, almost sentences that involve something in math class, and how we can represent those with uh, expressions or, or with uh, symbols, with math operations and things like that. So the first example they give us here is uh, 32 more than a number n. Okay, 32 more than a number n. More than obviously implies to me that I'm going to be adding something on to this letter n. Okay, so I take the number n and I add on to it 32. So look at the expression they give us right here. We have our number n and they add on to it 32 more. So that is an expression, a mathematical expression to say. 32 more than some number n, which we don't actually know right now. That's what we call a variable. Okay. Now, the next example uh, has a very important word in it, and it's kind of an interesting phrase for us, because it says 58 less a number n. Now, less implies minus. Okay. Less implies minus. So when we see 58 less a number n, then we do 58 minus n. Okay, now the difference is uh, when it says 58 less than a number n, that's a little different, and we'll get to that in a minute. But when it says 58 less a number n, then it just goes right in that order 58 less n, 58 minus n, 58 less n, 58 minus n. Okay, uh, so if, then if they ask us what is an algebraic expression for 18 more than a number n, Take a moment, pause the video, and, and write me down somewhere on your paper what you think 18 more than a number n is going to look like in math symbols. Okay, so take a second, pause the video, and do that. Okay, what we all should have wrote down, I hope, is 18 and then a plus sign, because more than means plus, and then our variable, which can stand for any number we want, which is at 18 plus n there, okay? Uh, so hopefully we're feeling okay about more than and less. More meaning plus, less meaning minus. Uh, 
and then we are going to uh, look at multiplying and dividing as well. Okay, so we should be able to write expressions, write math symbols from word sentences for plussing and minusing. And now we're also going to look at doing it for multiplying and dividing. And one very common word phrase that you will see is something like this, where it says eight times some number n. Eight times. Well, times we know is another word for multiplication, right? Multiplication. And so they give us expressions over here where instead of saying times some number n, they just use this math symbol, this little multiply symbol, to say 8 times n. Okay? However, one important thing we need to be aware of here is that uh, 8xn, sometimes this x can sort of look like a variable. Like we talked about variables earlier, this x can sometimes look like a variable right here. So most oftentimes we use a dot. Once we're in algebra class, we just use a dot for multiplying. Okay, 8 times n. So 8 times, instead of using this x, I would actually rather you use just a dot. Okay, just a big dot. You can make it big and bold however you want. 8 times 8 dot n. Okay, 8 dot n like this guy right there. Okay. And now our word that you'll see most often for uh, dividing is this word quotient. Hopefully we've seen that word before in a math class. Quotient uh, quotient means to divide things. Okay, And there's two ways that we can write those in math terms as well. And there I don't really prefer one over the other. But when you have a word phrase that says the quotient of and then two things, a number n and five, that's what they want you to divide. Okay, And they want you to do it in exactly that order. Because when we divide, the order does actually matter. right? Four pieces of pizza between two people is better than two pieces of pizza between four people. So when we divide, the order really, really does matter. So when they say the quotient of the first thing and then a second thing, that's the order that they want you to divide it. Okay, so it is the quotient of this number n, which was our first thing, and then 5, which is our second thing. Okay? The other way that we can look at this is as a fraction. So hopefully we can understand that this fraction bar right here is really just a divide sign. It's just saying n divided into 5 pieces. n divided by 5, n over 5 is a fraction bar. Okay? Now when you write a mathematical expression, an algebraic expression, for a quotient sentence, I'm really okay with you using either one of these. You can either use the fraction bar or you can use the divide symbol. Okay, either one of those is okay. So uh, I'd like you to take a look at these two problems right down here, A and B, where I've asked you to write a couple of uh, expressions using multiplying and dividing for your own uh, numbers and, and variables, in this case, n both times. So pause the video and take a look at these two, please, and write me an algebraic expression for 6 times a number n and the quotient of 18 and a number n. Pause the video, take a look there, then come on back and I'll show you what we should have. Okay, here in letter A, remembering that I really like the dot, uh, I would hope to see 6 and then a dot and then the letter n because dot represents times represents multiplication. Okay, this is multiplication. And then when we have quotient, uh, remember we have two different ways we can write that. One of them is just using our divide symbol that we know super well. Just dot, line, dot. And then the other is using a fraction bar. Okay? So when they ask for the quotient of 18 and a number n, the first thing they give us should come first, which is 18, and then the number n. Otherwise, the first thing they give us should go on the top, it's the first thing we write, and then the n on the bottom, the second thing on the bottom, okay? Which is the opposite of what it was up here, so please be careful about that. The variable, the letter, does not always come first or always go on top. It depends on the order they give it to you in, okay? Please make sure you have that stuff written down, also those examples and things. If you have questions about that, make sure to ask me in class um, tomorrow. Now, before we move on, uh, I need to address two different phrases we can see for subtraction. I'm sorry that your book does not do a very good job of this, but I want to uh, talk real quick about these two phrases. Okay? There's a very, very important difference. Okay? 
The phrase 6 less a number y, as I mentioned above, means minus. Okay, This one means minus. And when it says less, it just means take the 6 and minus y. 6 less y. 6 less a number y. Okay, uh, And then 6 less than, less than a number n. When you see this than word here, what they want you to do is flip the order around. Okay, we have to flip the order around here. N and 6 actually get flipped around. Okay, so this one was 6 minus Y. Now over here, we're actually going to do 6 less than a number N means take that number N that you already had and take 6 less than that number, meaning take away 6 from that number. Okay, so when we see the word than, it means we start with this second part. Okay, it means we start with n and then take 6 less than that, which is different than 6 less a number y. Less with no than is just right in that order, 6y with a minus sign between. But it's when we see that word than that we get very, very confused. So please make sure you write down both of those. Uh, I apologize for the, the typo here. Uh, but please make sure you write down both of those examples with their correct algebraic expressions uh, because according to uh, in our book these most certainly do not mean the same thing okay less and less than do not mean the same thing you need to write it differently okay so if you have questions about that please also make sure to ask me in class uh, before you start working on your practice problems six less means do it in the same order they gave you six less than means flip the order around okay now we have one more thing I want to talk about real quick, which is writing an expression with more than one operation. Okay, more than one operation, which means we're going to have to do multiplying and adding, or we're going to have to do uh, minusing and dividing or something like that. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples together, and then I'll give you a few to do, and we'll be done. Now, this first phrase they say three more than. Okay, so I'm going to underline more than. That's going to be important. And then they use this word twice. Twice a number x. Okay, twice a number x. Now, when they say twice a number x, what they really mean is two times a number x. Right? Two times this number x. So we know how to do two times a number x. We have a lot of different ways we can do it. Uh, what I want you to notice is in the expression, your book actually doesn't even put a dot in between or a, a little x for timesing, uh, for multiplying, which is totally okay if we're timesing a number, like a 2, by a variable like an x. We can just write 2x, 2x, okay, uh, instead of 2 times x. It's also perfectly okay if you want to write 2 times x. That's perfectly okay as well. I like that as well. That is twice a number x, two times as much as a number x. Now, the first part of this was three more than all that stuff with the two and the x. So, yes, we have two times x, but we have more than that. So we need to add three more onto that. Okay, so that's why we get this three plus two x. Three more than two times x, or twice x. Now, the next one they give us is uh, 9 less than the quotient of 6 and a number x. 9 less than, so there's our first important phrase, less than, which remember means subtract but flip the order around. And then it's the quotient of two things. Okay, So two parts we have to deal with here. And the first part that I want to deal with is the quotient piece. Okay. Because order of operations, if you remember from middle school, says to do dividing before we do subtracting. Okay, So quotient here, the quotient of 6 and a number x. Quotient means divide. So we, we'll use, in this case, a uh, fraction bar over here. But you certainly could use the divide symbol as well if you'd like to. And remember that the thing they list first, the 6, goes on top. And the thing they list second, which in this case is the x, goes on the bottom. So it's 6 over x, 6 divided by x, the quotient of 6 and x. Hopefully, by this time, all those different phrases are starting to mean the same thing for you. Okay. Now, 
when we get to the first part of this expression, the less than part, this word right here, the than, is the most important. Remember on the last slide, when we have less than, it means we put all of the stuff that comes after it before the 9. Okay, so the 9 now actually comes at the very, very end of this expression, way over here. So that's how we get the quotient of 6 and a number x, 6 and a number x right here, 6 divided by x, minus 9, minus this 9 here. Okay, so we have the quotient of 6 and x minus 9 because it's 9 less than that quotient that we started with. Okay, now uh, I don't think we need to go through this part right here. I'm not going to worry about that at all, so don't worry about that. Uh, and then don't worry about this here. But I would like you, before we go, to look at letter A here and letter B and see if you can write me two expressions uh, for those two word phrases. Okay, now they're going to involve doubles again. Uh, but uh, actually... Let's skip B as well. Just do letter A for me here. 3A, where it says, give me an algebraic expression for 8 less than the product of a number X and 4. Okay, so we have a less than part and a product part. As a reminder, which we didn't talk about before, product means times. Product means multiply. Okay? So try that. Pause the video. Try letter A. And then come on back and I'll show you what we should get. Okay, when we deal with this expression, uh, letter A, 8 less than, uh, I know the 8 is going to come at the very end because it's less than, okay? Less than the 8 comes at the very, very end. And the first part is the product of a number x and 4. So product means time, so I'm going to take my x number and I'm going to times it with my little dot symbol by 4, okay? x times 4, product of x and 4, and then I take 8 less than that. So x times 4 minus 8. Obviously, if you wrote uh, 4 and x, that's totally okay as well. But this is the way I would expect most of us to be writing that. Okay? If you have questions about any of these words, which we will deal with again tomorrow, but any of these word phrases translating into algebraic expressions, please make a note to ask me in class or do that before you leave. Uh, otherwise, that's all I have for you. Have a wonderful day.